Hey everybody, Daniel here. Uh, in this video today, I'm gonna talk about playing hi-hat, using some hi-hat techniques for playing some basic jazz and swing style patterns. A lot of people kind of think about this instrument as there's only one way to play it, and there's many, many different variations that you can get. So uh, I'm gonna talk about a few of these. I'm gonna use the fabulous Sabian Quiet Tones, because I'm here in my one bedroom apartment in New York, um, but these work great uh, and they produce a lot of uh, interesting sounds. So we can get a lot of the same sounds that we would out of a regular set of cymbals with these. So a lot of people sort of tend to think about the jazz ride pattern as, um, you know, right? So you're hitting the cymbal very, you know, every stroke is, is, is clean and you're trying to close it at the same time on two and four as you're bringing the stick down. That can be very difficult because it sort of gives often a flamming kind of a thing. So there's a lot of things we can do to smooth this out and to make um, everything feel a lot more legato. If you think about, you know, historically, as I do, I think about everything, the original hi-hat symbols that were used when the hi-hat first evolved in the early 1930s and, and onward all the way up to the, to the mid 40s, they were very small symbols. They were very, very thin symbols. Um, they were, you know, 11 or 12 inches in diameter, maybe even 10. Uh, so, and they were very, very thin. So they had this really nice kind of a wash. And the reason was that the idea, you wanted the hi-hat to kind of sound like kind of like the guitar player strumming uh, chopping four on the guitar or the bass player thum, 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 or the piano player kung, 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 right so the, uh, the original hi-hats were very very smooth and they were very light and today you know hi-hats tend to be much much heavier so even on a say a standard sort of medium set of hi-hats it can immediately sound very choppy and staccato Right, and it just doesn't have the right feel when you're trying to play like a cool kind of Frank Sinatra thing or a, a, a big band thing, uh, anything that kind of swings or even a shuffle, um, you know, blues style shuffle. All right, so let's jump in. So the first thing is we can, first of all, separating the cymbals, we can, we can let them ring against each other, which provides us a lot of this nice kind of breathing, legato, warm kind of a sound. So we don't need to open them all the way up so they separate. We can just kind of keep them together. Now the other thing that we can do that a lot of people don't realize they can do is we can enhance or help the symbols when they come back together by squeezing them in a variety of ways. So this helps to like lock down. If you imagine that two and four, one, two, a three, four, a one, two, a three, is like an opening, like a closing point. So it's like an, an inhale and an exhale. <gasps> you know, kind of a back and forth, yin and yang, whatever you want to call it. If we use a little bit of a squeeze here, it really gives a finality to the closing of the symbols rather than and they're still jangling and jingling and making all kinds of sounds. It's like, done. It really closes off that drop on two and four. So you might see a lot of the old style guys, style guys do this, but also modern players, uh, Jeff Hamilton and a lot of the modern jazz guys, swing guys, big band guys. This is something everybody uses, and there's lots of ways to do it. So you can, um, a lot of times you'll even see people turn the symbols like this, It really chops that two and four down, ends it. Um, also, we can just tighten the whole thing and just make it more, give it more of a tight kind of a feeling or use a little more of the shoulder of the stick, lay into it a little bit more and give it more of a loose kind of a feeling. In either case, we can squeeze here. Now, there's a variation we can use where we squeeze this on the and before, the eighth note before two and the eighth note before four. So it would sound like this. One. So you hear that? One and two and three and four. And one and two and three and four. And one. So now it sounds like it gives it just a little bit of a different sense. 
So that's another creative way to use that squeeze uh, on, on the hi-hat. Now, you can combine the squeeze, and if you could see underneath the cymbals here, but I can take, if I'm in a traditional grip, but you can also do this in the match grip, I suppose. Um, in the traditional grip, you can just lay, your, you sort of hold the stick between these two fingers here, the index and the ring finger, and you use your thumb on the top to squeeze the cymbal. So you put it on top of the cymbal and you're now grabbing the cymbal sort of like this. And you can use the stick on the, um, the rod of the hi-hat to enhance what's going on. Now this is another kind of classic technique that people use and what's nice about it is in addition to squeezing and choking that hi-hat cymbal down, you're really completing the two and the four with a little more oomph. So it adds sort of a mini backbeat. And you know, for those who do play, I'll pull my pad over, for those who do play jazz, you know that when you open, you don't, you're not really wailing, you're playing a very light two and four. So you're just emphasizing that two and four. So a nice alternative is here to go here and have this thing, this guy happening like this. You can put, put, the, put it the eighth note early sometimes there as well. Or you can play on the rim. This obviously isn't a snare drum, but you can just play on the rim and drop that in. So you're just tapping on the rim. So now your two and four is enhanced, okay? Um, finally, you know, we had talked about match grip. So you can literally take the stick if you're playing in matched, and I would flip it around so you're getting the butt end of the stick, and you just hold it upside down basically and put again your hand underneath and now your thumb comes over the top. And again, I like to now hold it between my first and second fingers. So I'm holding the stick really with sort of my back two fingers and the first and second fingers so the thumb is free to squeeze. And this comes from a choke symbol idea, uh, which goes back to a time before there were hi-hats and they would have to choke the symbol with two hands, they'd reach up to a splash and choke it. Now, what's cool is when you have this kind of a setup, you can do more interesting things with your hi-hat. So now, I, hopefully you can see underneath the, the hi-hat from this angle, I'll kind of move it over here, but you've got your squeeze going on up here on the top, and underneath you're holding between the first two fingers and you can tap underneath the cymbal. So now, you can tap on two and four, or Kind of a shuffly feel, right? Now you can also create like a three stroke rough. So, you can do it from underneath. also add that we can break up the hi-hat pattern here. So we don't always have to stay on this rigid thing and kind of play with it a little bit. And sort of now this is the last thing I'm going to point out in this video is that a traditional way of playing fills is to play uh, two against one. So if, if this is our time, right, we can kind of add this idea in. Right, here's my time, my pulse. So we can now put this underneath and go, That's another cool idea for playing your hi-hat. So um, now uh, we could take that same idea instead of here, instead of going, which is still swung eighth notes, right? Now we can uh, double that up and turn it into triplets. So we have 
right? So in your in most drummers' cases, it'd be right, right, left, right, right, left, right, right, left. In my case, I'm a lefty, so it's backwards. So if we put this underneath, uh, actually, I, I take that back. The pattern is, so one, two, three, four. Right, left, right, 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 right. So that's what it's gonna look like. So now here, too you can play 16th notes so and of course you can always play it totally closed as well and add a little bit of this or I might flip it around Okay, so that, those are some basic ways to fool around with the hi-hat so that when you're on the hi-hat, say at the beginning of a song in the intro or maybe the A section of the tune where you're not yet ready to go to the ride, where you know the basic melody is being played, or maybe on the bass solo, you don't just sound like a robot because jazz drummers aren't robots. They're not just playing this the whole way through a song. They're not. They're varying its constant sort of improvisation. So these are some basic ideas you can throw around and use to play your hi-hat in a jazz situation. Thanks. Keep swinging. More about this on my podcast, uh, which is um, the link. I'll put the link below. Ciao.